internationalization. If you're thinking, wow, did you really buy a globe just to do that? The answer is no. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about internationalized routing in Next.js, commonly abbreviated as I18N. And pro tip, that's because there's 18 letters in the word. It took me way too long to figure that out. I'm not going to tell you how long. When building websites or web applications with a global audience, you often want to serve up the content on that page that is in the native language of your users. So if I'm watching Netflix in France, I want to see it in French. If I'm watching it in the United States, I want to see in English. And with the built-in support for internationalized routing in Next.js 10, we can do just that. There's two pieces to internationalization that we're going to touch on today. You have the routing, which is handled by Next.js, and then you also have the localization of that text content, which we're going to talk about, but there's a variety of different libraries that exist in the React ecosystem and the JavaScript ecosystem even greater that handle this. The best way that I learn is through creating examples. I pretty much have to build something or I don't truly understand how it works. And this is the first time that I've had an opportunity to try out Next.js's internationalized routing. And the example application that I'm gonna show off today is pretty interesting. So if you didn't see, it was the 30th anniversary of the World Wide Web, how you're viewing this video right now. And the announcement post from CERN was interesting. First off, there's this really interesting loading state and then the page loads, the content shifts, you see this cookie banner come up, the image's aspect ratio is kind of screwed up and if I resize the page, you see it, it really doesn't get any better. And you scroll down, none of the images are lazy loaded. You know, it, it, no fault in this website in and of itself, but I looked at this and I thought, hmm, this content is in English. When I change it to French, the entire page reloads and then we see this new content come in. And I thought, wow, this could be a really interesting opportunity to mess around with internationalized routing and, and see what we can do. So this is the before and we're gonna talk about the after. If I switch this back to English and then I jump over to the after, which is cern-next.versella.app, I went ahead and I recreated this page using Next.js and Tailwind and I used it as an opportunity to demo some of the newer Next.js features and just get my hands dirty actually building something that uses internationalization. So here's the before, here's the after. You know, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough that I'm gonna be able to, to show off a few different features. So first things first, the original site had support for not only English, but also French. So we wanna enable our Next.js application to support multiple languages. And we do that by going to the next configuration file. So in my next.config.js on the left here, I have a key for I18N or internationalization, and I define two different locales, one for English and one for French. And we're gonna to default to English. Now this is gonna use subpath based routing. So with the default at the slash um, the root path, right? We're looking at English. But if I were to go to slash fr and any other nested routes inside of this application, that would use the French translation of this application. So by adding these keys into your next configuration, that's really all it takes to make the routes available. And even though we use sub path here, you can also do by subdomain as well. A little side note here is if you notice that when I changed languages, it was really, really fast. When you compared that against the previous one, they were doing a full page reload here. And then again, we see this page layout shift that's really not great. And the reason why this is so fast is because the built-in support for internationalized routing also still allows you to statically generate your pages. So the French variation as well as the English variation, these are both statically generated at build time and we're able to serve these up and make that transition really, really quick. Now this defaults to English, but what if I viewed this website and I was in France? So if we go into our Chrome settings and we go look at our languages, you'll see that I've added French. And what I'm gonna do is bump this up to the top of the list and make this the default language for my browser. Now, if I go back to the after demo and I refresh the page, you're going to see that it's automatically redirected to the French locale. 
And the reason this happens is due to the accept language HTTP header. So when I inspect this network request and I scroll down, you see there's a header in here for accept language. So Chrome tells our website, hey, I'm viewing this website either from France or my preference for language is in French. You should just default to using what I want. And this is all built into Next.js. I didn't have to configure anything to get this set up. I'll put a link in the description for more information about that accept language header. The next piece of handling internationalization is the localizing of the strings or the text on the page. So this header that says the birth of the web needs to be translated to French when I'm looking at the French locale. And there's a variety of different libraries that help you localize these strings based on your preference. But for this example, I'm just gonna show the most vanilla example. So what I've done is I've created two JavaScript files that just export an object. And inside of here, I have a key of what the part of text that I'm looking at. So for example, the hero text, and then I have the localized string as the value of that object. So the birth of the web and the French translation. So when I'm changing between these two, you see that it pulls the correct one from this file. And I'm able to do this using the use router hook from Next.js. So I import the router, I'm able to pull off what that current locale is. And then basically I'm just using this variable of T, short for translation, Naming is hard, right? <laughs> I'm using this variable of T. If it's English, pull that JavaScript file. If it's French, pull a different one, right? So a very simple example, but hopefully this helps you get the idea. So when I scroll down and I'm looking at the hero text right here, I just do t.hero and I'm able to access that localized string. The final piece here is when I make a transition between French and English or any of the locales, I want there to be a client-side transition using the router to change which page I'm on. So if I go up to our nav component that I've created at the top, you'll see that I have a select and I have two different options, one for English and one for French. And for this select, I wanna say when I change this, we're gonna use this function called change language to take the value that I passed in, e.target.value, which is gonna be that locale, and then use Next.js router to redirect the route. Specifically, we're looking at the index route here, and we're gonna forward along that locale. If you're wondering what the heck you're looking at here, this is the ES6 um, shorthand notation for objects. So this is the same thing as writing this. So this allows us to use Next router to change the pages and have it look really, really fast. And most importantly, prevent the full page reload. There were a few other nice optimizations I was able to throw in here because I'm using Next.js. So specifically using Next image, it allowed me to fix that weird, not responsive image that had the screwed up aspect ratio. And then if I scroll down, you see that this image inside of the blog post was lazy loaded using the next image. So I actually just recently did a video on the image component and automatic image optimization. So check that out if you're interested. Also, you'll notice that when I refresh the page, there is no loading state. And that's because we are pre-rendering this HTML from the server, thanks to Next.js support for server-side rendering and static generation. So this is a much better experience because it can be cached at the edge versus seeing this very interesting loading state and layout shift. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped clear up internationalized routing in Next.js and gave you a more tangible example of what this would actually look like in an application. And hopefully it prevents you from looking like Mr. Krabs here. <laughs> Let me know down below what you'd like to see me cover next. Thank you all so much.